curious, how many of you are Asian here? Right. How many people want to be Asian? Yeah. All right. So you've come to the right place. Uh, uh, welcome to the Canadian Premier. Welcome to the Canadian. <clears throat> welcome to the Canadian Premier. Hello. Uh, welcome to the Canadian Premier of Yellow Fellows. Directed by uh, Tetsuo Shimatsu. Uh, uh, some of you might know his voice from CBC uh, Radio One Roundup from uh, a few years back. He was the host. Uh, he'll be here not now, but later on after the screening. Uh, but we, uh, I just want to say we have a, uh, a guest I'd like to introduce. She's a uh, staunch supporter of the film. She's come from very far, a place where there's no white people. <laughs> and it's called Vancouver. <laughs> so, here she, okay, so here she is. Mika Shirovsky, Natalia. Natalia. Thank you very much. That's a beautiful, warm welcome for this beautiful film, Yellow Fellas. Um, C'est un honneur de présenter ce film, Yellow Fellas. My French is not very good, so I'm going to continue in English. Please don't be offended. Um, Tetsuro Shigematsu, this is his debut feature film. We are very proud of it. I'm here to present it because I love him so much and his wife and his family, and it's a dream come true after seven years in the making. So without further ado, Tetsuro is here by the way. He will be available for question and answer after the film. But right now, I would like to show you Yellow Fellas. Daniel. Bombus is responsible for all this music, and, and uh, all my actors and my crew, where are you? Ron Golnick, our number one skinhead. Um, I'd like just to say, speaking of skinheads, none of the skinheads were that real skinheads. But this, uh, Brendan, Brendan, don't be shy, come on. Dude. Uh, before, I, speaking of skinheads, Roman Fee, that wonderful young man you saw, looking, this premiere is, is dedicated um, to the memory of Roman Fee. So uh, this is a big reunion for us, and uh, we're so thrilled that you came out to all of us. Why did it take seven years to make that? That's a terrific question. Uh, and I'll tell you that after the show, actually. Oh, yeah, before I forget, we're all partying at 1445 Les Sociales. Just down on the corner, right there. And you're going to, on Bishop and the Maison, you're going to see a huge yellow neon palm tree that was planted in our honor. And Les Sociales is right behind it. So please come and party. It took seven years. Because um, this is my first film, I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, if it wasn't for the advice of Gordon Hashimoto, where are you, Gordon? It would have taken 14 years. Uh, as you can see, I, this really is my wife and daughter, and so we were shooting in real time. We took, we took six months to shoot it uh, from summer, the first running scenes, until the cold of Montreal. And that's when people eventually realized hey, this is not how a real movie is shot. And so, you know, people began be getting a little fatigued, and post I had a lot of offers. Uh, people looked at the, ru the, the rushes and they said, I want to cut this movie for you. Esteemed editors um, volunteered their services and to do sound and to do foley, and you know, when you see so many people, 
it's there's there for a reason, believe me, because I took on all those jobs because uh, I thought I was greedy. I wanted all the knowledge. I wanted to do everything. I wanted to do a lot of those things myself. My brother-in-law, Bambus, um, if it wasn't for him, the movie never would have got completed. He well, did all the music. That's not true. Yeah, yeah. All the music. All the music. So if you enjoyed it, uh, please give my brother-in-law a hand. But it's really that's sort of production. Really. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. None of these people here, yeah, they're all extras, right? Exactly. <laughs> now, I mean, you put most hours in your own. It took about it took about ten thousand hours. Yeah. yeah. Years on it. Well, I only did yeah, that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Question. Well, the question is, why did I choose genre to tackle these particular themes? And I suppose uh, you can't do better than Mark Twain in this situation. I think he said something to the effect of, if you had something to say um, or something to express, uh, do it with humor. Because otherwise, I mean, these are potentially sensitive topics. If you, if you broach them in a serious, strident manner, then you're going to raise people's tackles and ears tend to shut. But uh, I think if you do it uh, in an entertaining fashion, well, in a way, I don't have a message. I'm not a propagandist. I want to create something entertaining. But in a way, entertainment is really the most devastating Trojan horse to get into outside people's minds. And I think, uh, so, again, to quote someone else, since I had no original thoughts myself, <laughs> someone said the purpose of literature, and I think film is the literature of our time, is a Russian fellow. He said, its purpose is to break up the ice in people's minds. And so I think, um, what better way to do that than to have people uh, cracking up, so to speak. So, next question. Anyone? Anyone? Go ahead. Yes. Is there a sequel coming up? Uh, well, I don't know if any of these guys, well, to tell you the truth, when, after I finished shooting this film, we got out of Dodge. We left Montreal, and I think the perception was, understandably, well, they called in all their favors, then they left town, and then St Stuart works, uh, he's the manager of McLean's Club, and they'd all say, whatever happened to the movie? And frankly, Stuart could only tell the truth, well, I'm sure he's working on it, you know, trying to buy some time. But after, you know, still for the first two years, I get these, you know, emails, like, you know, like, what? What the heck? Yeah, what's going on? Especially one of these guys was sending me death threats, saying like, you know, come on, we're not kids anymore, what's happening in this movie? And all I could say back, honestly, I'm working on it, I don't know how long it's taking, it's my first film. And uh, eventually the email stopped, and then uh, people assumed I died, they hope I died. I, I, confession, I did come back to Montreal one time, but I wore a mask. I honestly, I never went out into the streets, because it was three years ago, and I, what was I going to say? But this year, when we finally got the movie finished, I was able to call people up and say, yeah, not only is the movie finished, and they were happy enough with that, but we're premiering at Fantasia. And that was a huge, that, that's the biggest thing for me. This is a fairy tale ending for a long time, because we would walk by Fantasia during the summer, and I said, and I said out of my breath, wouldn't it be great if, when this movie's all said and done, that we would premiere at Fantasia? And so this is, this today, all of you being here is, is seven years in the making. So thank you so much for sharing your life. Uh, this is a man who's, uh, this film is a visual medium, and co-author of this film is Stuart Ashton. So I just want you to come here and say a little something. Uh, that's when the uh, the buyer in the house will please raise her hand.